Hello and welcome my fluid acrylic friends. This is Stephanie. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to get right to painting today. You can see I have some of my swipe tools out. I am working on a 20 by 20 gallery wrap canvas today. I do get my swipe tools primarily off of Amazon. I've ordered a couple from the Fluid Art Company. In today's painting, I'm going to be using a black pillow paint. I'm going to quickly just flip the painting over and I show you how I prep my canvas. I do painter's tape all the way around the outside and then I use some either paper or cardboard from the packaging of the canvas to cover the back of it just to prevent from my fingers from getting on there and creating extra paint smudges. I'm trying to keep it clean and neat for my potential future owners of this beautiful piece. So that black pillow paint that I'm putting down in this particular instance is Black Onyx, which is made by Color Place. It's sold at Walmart, although you can't actually get this paint anymore. It's an interior house paint. I have since switched over to Glidden, and it comes in a matter flat finish, and I like that uh, pillow paint as well. Most of my pillow paints, I put about a 25 to 40% Floetrol ratio in especially when I'm doing these larger pieces to help the pillow paint flow and stretch, also increases the working time with the paint, preventing it from drying too quickly while you're still working and manipulating it. You can see here, I really like to cover the entire canvas. Sometimes I'll use um, a tongue blade or my hand, as long as I've got gloves or something on to kind of spread it out. I can feel the consistency throughout the piece, whether that way I can kind of tell whether there's a big puddle in the middle but this also allows me to spread the paint over the canvas, making sure that I've covered all the corners and the sides. Part of the reason I do this is because I feel like when you're moving the paint, the paint will follow the path of least resistance. And if you already have it covered, it's more likely to go in that direction rather than like if you hit a lip on the edge of your paint and you get like the resistance as it's trying to move along the canvas, which you've probably experienced if you've done this at all. So I just take my time making sure I've got everything covered. I go over it a few times like this with my hand, making sure that I kind of have like an even distribution of paint over the canvas. And sometimes I'll actually go back and add a little puddle where I know I'm going to want to stretch the paint. Then what I'm going to start with here is a loaded palette knife swipe. So what that means is that I'm going to take some colors to manipulate over the top of my base or my pillow paint as you would call it here in the Shelley art community. And I'm going to do the first one is a blue black by Atelier and then I'm going to cover that with uh, titanium white. I mix my cell activator with one part paint to anywhere between one and three parts of Australian Floetrol. Next, I'm going to go down with layers of paint. I have a Crimson by, of all brands, Master's Touch. I have a Carmine Red by Amsterdam. I have a Napfall Crimson by Liquitex. And then add in my favorite Aztec Gold by Arteza and Pearl White by Arteza. So as I load the palette knife, you may or may not know this, it's in reverse order of putting it down on the canvas. So normally if you're just working on a canvas and you're putting your paint down, you're going to put one color, layer the next, and go up, and then you put your cell activator on the top. It's the reverse order when you're loading your palette knife. Then I kind of like tilt my palette knife at about, I don't know, about a 30 degree angle because you want to be able to catch the pillow paint as you're kind of sliding the next layer of the uh, pouring medium paint across the top of the pillow. You want to give it a few seconds to rest after you've done the swipe. You're allowing the paints to kind of saturate into the cell activator or the cell activator to kind of pull those paints in, so to speak. Uh, I'm going to do another swipe here. Whenever I use the same tool, you want to clean it really well in between. This time I'm layering the titanium white first. Oops, nope, I'm not. I'm going to swipe that off re-wipe my palette knife and actually go back and put the uh, blue black down first. So 
So as I layer the paints and work with the different swipes, I don't always do the same layering. Something you should know about me is that when I begin a painting, I've already done a lot of prep work into the colors and the layers and what's going to give me the cells that I want to see. So what I typically do is I get all of the paint mixed two to three days before I plan to do a big painting like this. And then I let the paint sit for a good 24 hours. And then I go into the studio and I start working on my four by four tiles doing blooms or swipes, but mostly what I'm doing on those tiles is working with the paints to try to find the best layering, um, and not just the best layering, but the layering that I want to see, the cells that I want to see, the color differentiation, um, whether I want peacock cells, whether I really want something that's going to stretch at the base of all the pouring mediums to kind of give me a good background. Um, and then also you get a good feel for what your opacities of your paints are or your transparency or your semi-transparency and how well they're going to work together and what they're going to give you as a result. So by the time I got to this process or to this point in a large painting like this, I know what's happening with the colors and I know exactly where I want to put them and how I want to layer them. What this part is, all discovery is kind of the swipe. Where do I want the swipe? So how do I want the composition to look? Sometimes I know that going into a painting. Sometimes it's all just discovery and just going with the flow. This one I really wanted to just maintain a very abstract open mind. I really didn't have an exact idea of what I wanted to go down with. Um, knowing that when I started this painting it was more an exploration um, of the colors and the different layers and the different swipes and how those were going to work together. I was working on a different piece when I started this one and I paused the other piece to come and just kind of start to play around with my swipes. I really love how the gold works in many of these different color combinations. I use this gold in a lot of my paintings. Um, I think it gives you some depth. It's a semi-transparent mica. It's the Arteza that I just mentioned. It's Aztec gold. It can shift your colors. It can add a little bit of yellow to a blue, give you sometimes a green. Um, it also can give you a nice background or if you kind of float it across the canvas and outside of your swipe, it can stretch and give you a nice beautiful sort of halo or highlight behind some of your um, designs. You'll have to let me know, um, you know, if you're watching this video, whether you like the side view or if you like to see head on, I've tried a couple different ways here. This one I set up from the side and I really hadn't given it too much thought, but I think you can kind of see some of the stuff that I'm working on in the background. Um, I'm not really sure if it's beneficial or not. You kind of have to give me some feedback on that one. In the end of this, uh, after I'm done swiping, I do bring this canvas down to my side and spin it and it is off camera and I've been trying to capture that. I just forgot to do it in this video. So my apologies for that, but you will get to see the end result after I spin it. So here I'm just tilting the painting, trying to get the paint to flow in a particular direction, stretching some of the cells, also moving some of those swipes around to get some movement so they're not just straight. Sometimes I like the way one swipe leads into another and I want it to kind of bend in a particular place. It also evolves, as you may or may not know if you've worked with this technique. Uh, through time, you know, you might have one painting here and then five minutes later you have a completely different composition and painting just with the movement. It's kind of fun, interesting, it's a neat exploration, it's a neat journey. I also learned after this video that I need to adjust my lights a little bit because I have my big bar LED light over the painting and on this black canvas or black uh, pillow it really shows up. Still working on the studio space. No matter what you do, it's hard to make sure that everything is just perfect. I 
almost almost had a bit of a squid going on there for a bit. So what else can I tell you about? So I told you about my colors. I told you about my pillow. Um, I didn't really tell you about my pouring medium for this painting. Um, I do change my pouring medium pretty frequently, actually. It kind of depends on what's in the store, what's available, what I have on the shelf. This particular pouring medium that I used in this painting was a Valspar semi-gloss interior untinted paint. And I used three parts of that to one part Joe Sonia's gloss varnish. And just a dollop of Bare 8300 to kind of thicken it up a little bit. My go-to pouring medium typically is about two parts bare, one part Josanya's, and maybe just a little bit of water to thin it, depending on how the bare comes out of the can. It can be exceedingly thick. Um, it just sort of depends on, I live in Wisconsin, so it sometimes depends on what's going on, what season it is. I work in my basement, so the studio is pretty stable with regards to humidity but like right now it is in the end of middle to end of august it's super humid outside and so everything is super sticky and and things do change and i know i know other people note that depending on where they're living and that is a huge um influential factor on and how we're working with many of our paints i think the true true what's the word i'm looking for variable that you want to control is your consistency and everybody will say consistency is key and i will second that uh, you really just need to know that your pouring medium whether it be in one color or the next that all those colors once they're mixed are a very similar consistency they might be off by a tiny bit of a degree of consistency here or there but for the most part you want them to be very similar um, part of that is because if you have a one piece or one color that's thicker than another, you're going to see trailing or bleeding or muddying of your colors. Um, there's several other factors that play in here and things that are going to happen to your paint, but the consistency amongst those pouring mediums is definitely key. I don't ever do the drip test. I feel that, I don't know if there's anybody out there still doing that. I don't feel that that has ever really helped me because I think scientifically, you know, if you put more uh, product in a circle than the next circle, that product is going to be heavier and it's going to drip fa faster. So I really just don't find that, that that's very helpful or useful. I really have to put my stick in the paint and stir it to really feel and also you know pulling up the paint letting it drizzle getting an understanding of how many seconds it stays on the top um, is one of the other aspects that you can look for when you're looking at your paints and also just knowing that like if i use a tube paint versus um a, a more liquidy paint, I'm going to get a different consistency. So I might need to add, you know, a little bit of bare to thicken it up, or I may need to add a little bit of varnish to thin it, or maybe even some water. God forbid we use water, but yes, I do use water in some of my things. So, and it is okay. It's definitely okay. I promise you. Just watching the painting, um, looking at the different swipes that I did here. You can see towards the, I would say maybe the eight o'clock position, the swipe that kind of goes off there is kind of more lacy with a little bit more white on the black. Um, that stays in the painting as I stretch and spin it and it actually kind of has a nice kind of feathery appearance as it stretches out here. I really like those palette knives, the one that I just showed you, kind of the more round base, allows you to do a little bit more of the advanced swiping with kind of the back and forth, tilting, pulling, drawing. Um, I like to go back into the paint and do stuff with the tip of it. I 
I do really love working with the palette knives. It's quite fun. <laughs> So what else can I talk about? Well, we're kind of coming to the end here, but um, I have another show coming up in Wisconsin, in Cedarburg. Uh, it is the Wine and Harvest Fest. It pulls in hundreds of thousands of people, I think. I'm not 100% sure I'd have to go look at the population, but it's got a several hundred vendors uh, between artists and makers throughout the state of Wisconsin. It's a very big venue. I did a strawberry fest there in July and I had a huge turnout, um, by far my best day of sales ever, just in one day, which was crazy. Um, so hopefully I'll be going back to Cedarburg uh, year after year, as long as I keep up this, uh, this gig. I also have a thing here in Madison, Wisconsin coming up this Friday night. It's called the Bodega. It's at Breeze Stevens Field. It's a Madison Makers uh, Market, one of many that we host here in the Madison area. I'm actually the featured maker this Friday night. It'll be, you know, a balmy 90 degrees, probably hot and humid. It runs from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. I sell a lot of my paintings at these types of things, but I also do sell the coasters. So those 4x4 tiles that I turn into coasters, I do a lot of those. People love those. I also just started doing um, badge reels and those little wine markers. Just a little something extra I can do with the leftover um, skins that I have on maybe a tile that didn't work out 100%. Maybe you have like 50% of a tile that you're like, oh, I really like that aspect of it, but I don't like the other half of it. You can, you know, cut the edges of the skin and tear the skin off your tile and turn them into something really cool. Not a fan of doing jewelry. There's a lot of people out there I know that are doing that and I think it's cool. I just don't really want to get into the jewelry making aspect of it personally myself. Um, but I've seen some really cool things made and um, it is a really good way to um, get a s additional source of income if you really enjoy this style of painting. It's always nice to have something small in your booth because sometimes people really love your style of painting and they just can't afford a $500 painting or a $200 painting and they can take a little something with them. Just doing a little embellishing there, a little swirl here and there. I don't do this in all my paintings. It's just kind of in the moment when you feel it or you see something and you're like, oh yeah, I want to add a little something here or there. Some people do a lot of it. Some people do very minimal. I think I just kind of want to add a little detail here or there and that's really all I'm doing. Finding some wispy edges. Next time I do this, I'm gonna pour myself a glass of wine before I start so we can be uh, all chill and relaxed and you can just sip wine with me. I have a favorite new wine that I just um, opened up last night, so I'll have to share that in the next go around. We had a campfire here last night, and of all things to do in the heat of the summer, it was crazy. Um, we should have been sitting in water instead. So you're gonna see, at the end, you're gonna see a wet finish of this and then a dry finish. They're pretty similar. I don't see uh, a lot of differences um, between the two. I did note in this painting that there was a tiny bit of cracking as the paint dried. 
it's not exceedingly noticeable. Um, I think I maybe put less Floetrol in my pillow than I normally do. And I think that that's why, because I think the paint, the pillow paint is thicker. Like in the beginning, when you're watching me spread it out, it looks really, really thick. So a little bit more Floetrol would have probably helped prevent that. So there's the wet finish. And there's the dry finish. Very similar. So give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Have a good night.